What's up, Homestead homies? It's Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. I'm Doug. And I'm Stacy. I'm Doreen. I'm Danny. I'm Danae. And today we're going to start, this is uh, not really kicking off, but we're going to start talking uh, more about homeschooling. homeschooling. And this isn't probably uh, a video for like a person who's already homeschooling, but if you're thinking about getting into homeschooling, um, we brought our friends up to the homestead. And if you're wondering why we're sitting on this furniture outside the front of our house, <laughs> It's because of our friend Trent. Uh, he brought us up this stuff for the outdoor kitchen. And um, he's a friend of ours. He brought us our Daisy the Duck. I'll leave a video link right up here if you want to watch it. And uh, so we just, uh, he just dropped it off and then they showed up. So we're just kind of. So it's a beautiful day. Rolled right into couch. it. So that's why we're yeah. on the furniture on the front of the house. So, but what we're going to do today is we're going to talk to um, Doreen and her girls. Uh, Doreen's a homeschool mom. She has two sons also that are older, they're both uh, in college. Uh, one's graduated and working and one's yeah. in college. Graduated from college and working, and the other one's in daughter. college. And then, yeah, they have an older daughter so too that she homeschooled. So she homeschooled all of her kids. She's a veteran homeschooler. <laughs> and so Stacy wanted to have her up so we could talk, uh, ask some questions, um, and give you guys some ideas if you're thinking about homeschooling and these are some of the challenges or whatever that might come up. And we're just, keep, and again, every state is, um, has their own specific homeschooling laws and regulations. So we live in the Midwest of Missouri, so that's pretty much what we're gonna be talking about. And then, um, you know, yeah, we we're not gonna get into specific about like hours, how many hours you need, you right. guys can look that up. We're just gonna kind of talk about, you know, general. Yeah, we're just trying to put you guys on the path and then it's up to you to investigate all of your local uh, laws and ordinances and whatnot. So what you got? What do I got? Okay, well, um, what made you wanna to start to homeschool? Oh, uh, wow. That was about 23 or 4 years ago. I and mean, that's like pioneer material. <laughs> that's right. Because 20 were, years ago, when you said you were a homeschooler, they were like, whoa. Yeah, I, I didn't know anyone that homeschooled. Right. Um, actually, my husband was coming home from work, and he listened to was listening to a Dr. Dobson program, yeah. and he came in and he said, hey, let's homeschool. And I was like, huh? No, I'll just be a room mother and make cupcakes. <laughs> right. I don't really want to homeschool. So anyway, then I got some books and read about it and thought, okay, well, I guess I can do that for a little bit. I'll try that. Yeah, 20 so. years. I mean, that seriously, that no one, that's like chiropractic, right? When chiropractors just came out, they were like, that's witch doctor stuff. And now <laughs> yeah. they're awesome. So homeschooling 20 years ago was definitely an anomaly. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not many people know. Yeah. Nobody. So the support system that you had 20 years ago versus now oh. is like night and day different. Yeah, there was... There wasn't any right. support system. There was some curriculum, but uh, there was no local groups or anything. Right. And now it's Highly like, discouraged. So then you started with your oldest son. Mm -hmm. So what's the age difference between your oldest son? Uh, uh, 27 and then, and then 10. Okay. So what do you find when you're homeschooling is like the most challenging for you? Uh... Probably when they get older, um, when they're younger, it's a lot easier for me. You know, you teach them to read, and then um, then you have that period of time once they start to read where they basically can do almost can do everything by themselves almost because they can read the instructions and on their schoolwork. And so Danny's kind of got to that point where she can do most things by herself. Uh, but when they get older, um, I don't really want to do chemistry experiments. <laughs> right, so I don't really want to do yeah. So um, that's why like now we have uh, you know local homeschool group and so like learning center and that sort of thing where I will do that. Now my older kids I didn't necessarily have that so much and some things that I didn't know a lot about like like let's say uh, my oldest son uh, took Latin and um, a group of us got together and we hired a tutor and so we all kind of paid and had it, but uh, I guess that would be the hardest part when they get older. Um, just as the curriculum expands. Yeah, and yeah. I, I just don't have time, right. nor the desire to learn and read. So now the, there's like a place where you can go where there's a person who does that specifically, like yeah. a science Mo thing. Most, so yeah, let's talk about that. So for some people who have never done it, so they know that there's other people out there or other groups out there that could help them. They don't have to do it all themselves. if if they want to go and take an art class somewhere or if they want to do this or that. So how, what is that? Explain it. 
Um, I'm sure, I, I mean, we're in, we live in St. Charles, Missouri, and we're, you know, across the river from St. Louis. So just, I'm sure that if you're, most places, if you're within, um, you know, driving distance, uh, there's going to be homeschool um, groups. I'm just guessing. I mean, I just know, like, here locally, there's several. I mean, several in St. Charles. There are several in St. Louis. And um, so I'm heavily involved in those things. Like, my kids take are in drama, and they take ballet, and they take learning center classes. Like, Danae takes chemistry and speech mm -hmm. and something else I can't remember history <laughs> at a learning center. yes and then we take Danny takes Spanish and we take art, art. so um, we're busy in that now my older kids I wasn't so much didn't right. have all that but um, well, when you had the older kids did you didn't have a computer program and all that well we didn't know had... there yeah there was not I can remember I think we're just computers just sort of came out so right. everything is so different now right. you know with the older kids there was barely any computers. I'm sure some people even do online computer classes and stuff, but I've never done anything like that, I don't think. So when you go to these like um, program type things you're talking about, learning mm -hmm. centers, you know, it's a place where people can bring their kids on subjects that they might not really want to do at home, like in a science experiment, for example. Right. So when you go in there, there's like a science teacher mm -hmm. who enjoys doing that. Right. It, right. It, right. And then right. they would teach the kids for that half hour or whatever. Right. And then... You would yeah, there's or... there's lots of co-ops too. Um, uh, that's that's basically moms and maybe some dads that will get together and they all take her. It may not necessarily be a science teacher, but right. it might be a mom who has an interest in that. Right, right. And so they'll get together and those sorts of the co-ops oftentimes don't even cost, or maybe you'll just you know like Danny does. A, we do a sort of co-op. We do an American Girl Book Club on Tuesday morning. And it's just moms, and you know, one mom teaches writing, and I do, yeah, we have craft. I do kind of the sciencey kind of thing, and so. Uh, so I mean, so uh, anybody can get together with a group of people right. if they have like um, the, kids. You go off age. each other's strengths, right? right? So like, if you like doing crafting, you're like the crafting person when they bring their kids to the right. educational center. Right. Yeah, I would definitely recommend if you have a group like of people that you hang out with, the co-ops are really nice because. Um, you, it doesn't cost money, and then everybody does a little bit, so that you're not responsible for everything. Right. And we've done a few with my older kids. And I then you get out of the house too. Yeah, kids. it's good yeah. for the kids because yeah. they can interact with other kids. Right. You know, because I think that's one of the main, uh, uh, not problems, but that's one of the things people point out about homeschool kids is they always have this fear of like they're not being interacted with other kids. As much as and they I normally would. Think it would, would. Be no, yeah, we that. definitely do not have that problem. Right, right. Because you guys are on the go a lot. Yeah, yeah But 20 go years ago. 20 years ago, it was more difficult. But right. I mean, now, how do you, you know? Now, what did you do different back then? Um, you know what? You get your own niche. What we did is we had our own niche of people and friends and families, and families got together. I mean, we still get together with family, right. but there was more of that back then, probably. But my kids were involved. Like there was a homeschool choir, and my older kids were musicians so um, they would be like in orchestras and um, they had a band or um, like a folk band my older kids and they played at coffee houses sure. and so right. you know we've kind of done it all pretty right. much so what about for you and sports, guys too my son Paul played sports so. okay yeah let's talk about that before mm -hmm. I get to you guys okay <laughs> so hold on so when you are um, talking about sports how do you get them involved in the sports well when they're not uh, in the actual school sitting. Yeah, I mean, we play um, just different, like with our uh, local neighborhoods and stuff. We play different sports. The kids have um, gymnastics too. We've done, but uh, as far as when they get a we did, older, when they got older, we did have a problem. We tried to get into um, recently the um, track and field cross and country. cross country. Oh, for you? Yeah, yeah. the schools wouldn't accept. Yeah, homeschoolers. they have a really like here locally. We have a um, in the spring and. Um, summer they have a really good triathlon high school triathlon club so Danae was involved in that and did triathlons mm -hmm. it was a lot of fun and yeah and but so how does it work okay because I know would, it's different in different states about how you well um, they would not we tried to get her into a lo not local high school in their track and field and in the state of Missouri it's one of the few uh, states that does not allow homeschoolers to participate in high school athletics unless you take I believe it was 80 percent of your schooling within the school district so I mean that pretty much that's not even homeschooling really anymore right. so 
But in anyway, other states, other states, yes, most states you are allowed to do that. So, so Missouri, I, if you're listening, we want to change that regulation. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. But then, other than that, Missouri is a is a nice state. Yes, to homeschool. other than that, Missouri is, is a really nice state to homeschool in. But but that's one of the few things. Um, so okay, yeah. So for you, before I ask you guys, what would you say is the best thing for you as a homeschooler? Homeschool or mom? Homeschool or mom. Homeschool or mom. Yeah. Uh, well, I think that, you know, I've definitely been able to keep a close relationship with all my kids. Right. Yeah. And we all talk and we all kind of know the same people and um, they're not going off every day, spending all day with people that I don't know. Right. I don't really know what's going on. But yet, we're still really busy. It's just that because I'm bringing them places, and oftentimes, like if I'm, we're waiting for her. I'm talking with the parents of the other people. You're, just, you're playing you're with the kids, involved right? In so even though they're involved in things, I still kind of know the people because I see them as we come and go, and I know the parents know the. So um, I think it's better than, you know, and sending them off. And now everything is so crazy that I can't. Yeah. Really I mean, schools like today have become such indoctrinating. Oh. you know. Well, you it's can't even do the mess. work. Right. You I mean, do and it's just so, they're work. not really teaching. They're just programming, you know. Right. So I think Oh, that's yeah, no. With, with most of the homeschoolers that I know, and certainly with my kids, um, they far out, out see, um, exceed what the other people right. are doing in, in testing and everything else. So uh, I don't think... Um, <laughs> I think that's um, I think that's one thing that most people will find for sure is that homeschooling kids now are are definitely outperforming um, public school kids. I think that's a, a very <laughs> it's a very general statement, and the but I think it's too, pretty yeah. legit. You know. Yeah, when my oldest son, um, I dual enroll them when they are. Oh, in, explain what dual enrolling is. When you're 16. Uh, that's the best chicken. Yeah. <laughs> a rooster. That, a rooster. rooster. <laughs> He's calling all the girls over to his shade spot. <laughs> um, when you're in high school, and you're, when you're 16, you can take classes at college, and it can count as high school credit and then as college credit. So one class in, um, in college counts as a full year of high school credit. And then it counts as uh, one college, you know, the college credit too. So my um, two older kids, actually my three older kids, that's right, three up. Um, they started dual enrolling when they were 16, taking classes at um, local college. And then by the time they went to college, they already had um, almost 30 credit hours mm -hmm. because they had been taking it from, you know, 16 on. So. You can only take six hours a semester, but like my oldest son, we kind of cheated, and he took it two different colleges. So, so while we're talking about that, uh -huh. how was the transition from homeschooling, you know, general ed, into the college for the ones that have been there already? Uh, we never had any trouble at all. Um, Stuart went to Missouri Science and Technology, and he's a um, chemical engineer, and um, he was full scholarship. Right. My, they didn't squawk at all. He, he took an, at least in Missouri, um, you take an ACT, and I think that's probably universal. If you do really well, then they kind of don't even, right. Right. Too, I mean, they ask for your high school diploma, but if you do well on your ACT, um, well, like ACT. my first, yeah, my first two kids, uh, my daughter, she's a, a pianist, and she teaches piano lessons now. Um, they both did well on their ACT, so they never even looked really paid right. attention to the high school. I mean, we made them. I made them a um, transcript, although my daughter made her own transcript. <laughs> I'm like, make that transcript, you know, that right. you took. But, uh, and then my next son, um, he did not take the ACT. He took classes at the community college and then did well. And, and did the testing from the school. Right, right. Did the took a test and was able to take classes. and in high school and took classes and then he just transferred to UMSOL and he's a senior this year. Yeah, because I think a lot so. of people will be, they're nervous or what they think, well, if I homeschool, if they did want to go to college uh, to actually get indoctrinated, no. <laughs> if they did go to college, how, you know, would that be difficult? But it really wasn't. No one I know has had any trouble. Right. I don't know anyone that has had any trouble, but. Cool. Okay, so for sure you, happens, Danny, what would your, what is your day like? When you get up, how do you get up in the morning, what do you, what do you do for your homeschooling day when you're in school? 
Well, I pretty much go downstairs and just start. <laughs> <laughs> she has her grandpa, uh, their grandpa oh, comes yeah, in. Oh, yeah, my grandpa grades my math every, every Wednesday and Thursday because I'm busy some days in the morning because I go to art in the morning and I go to art in Spanish on Friday morning. So, on Thursday, yeah. Thursday, I went to grade my math. And Are you good at math? Uh, I usually get an A plus every day. An A plus? Oh <laughs> yeah. my. How's your Spanish? Spanish is good. Say something. You know, um, Paquito? What? Paquito? Not yet. Yeah, that means a little know. bit. <laughs> okay, well, pa Paquito. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what has been the best thing about home, being homeschooled? Um, I don't know, just being around my family more, stuff like that. I don't know. Kind of being home. your own boss. You like being home. Yeah. yeah. Home what about the the, um, the worst thing about it? Uh, if there's a worst thing about it. I don't think there is. It's all pluses, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You give it high marks? Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, yeah. let's ask the older sister. Uh -oh. Hey, what about <laughs> you, Danae? What do you think? What's the best thing about being well, homeschooled? Well, I think the best thing is you can get a lot more done in like a small amount of time. I have a friend that has been homeschooled and she recently just went to a public school and she told me that the things they do in seven hours she could have gotten done in three. Right. So that's probably a plus. And then the minus would probably be that I can't take like do the sports at the schools, but that is just Missouri. So. That's pretty much the only thing that I would say I don't like as much. You know, even wait, leave it a few months, that might even change. You yeah, it know. could. Especially nice. because of our video. All of you homestead yeah. homies, get on the phone. We're going to leave the links. Blow up the phone to the people who make those decisions. So you said you're, um, you have a friend that started off homeschooling uh -huh. and now is in the public school. Mm -hmm. So she's coming home and telling you about her public school yeah. experience. She's never been in public school before. How's that going? She doesn't like it as much. She said she likes homeschooling much better. All right. Yeah. And like you said, she sees uh, that she used her time much better in uh -huh. uh, homeschooling versus the public school and everything. Mm -hmm. What grade is she in? She's a, she's a freshman. Freshman. Wow. That's got to be kind of, of a different kind of a transition, too. Like, yeah. I know going to college is one, but in your mind, you're like, you graduated homeschool and you're going to college. But to be like homeschooling and then go be a freshman in high school, that's got to be different. Yeah. Yeah. I always wondered how, like with kindergarten, when I first started teaching the kids, I think, oh my gosh, I, kindergarten, I'm done in an hour. How on earth do they have those kids there for seven or eight hours? Right. Right. I never could understand that. It's like, I cannot, and I don't know, it didn't make sense to me. It's, I mean, it's it's almost like holding them back. Mm -hmm. You know, because like, we're, like where we live, you know, like there's Amish people, right? So like, you'll see like a 12 or 13 or 15 year old boy with a team of horses in front of them. You know, by himself, just walking with that. But most people in regular society would say, oh, wow, that's so dangerous, or, you know, like, try to stop him from doing that. And to them, it's just the way of life. So Well, even they go to school till eighth grade. Right. And what, what we were looking at the tests, and I was like, if I gave this eighth grade test or to the majority of people, they couldn't pass it. Right. Because it was oh, like, oh, my gosh. We know yeah. about the Amish and the Mennonite schooling, right? Because it's, I have one test. You know, you know, they're, they're, oh, they're, yeah. They <laughs> kids they did not like it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's hard. Yeah, no, right. yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it, it yeah, was yeah, hard. It was hard. Whenever I, I, um, yeah, they did not like that one. So <laughs> yeah. I, I can believe it. Yeah. I believe it. Cause no, because we were looking at some of the tests. I was like, oh yeah, my God. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. hard. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that's kind of by design, you know, like, um, just kind of keep them. I don't think that, I mean, I'm not, you know, I mean, public schools are fine, but I just think it's a design to keep people from achieving their fullest oh. potential. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because usually, every child is usually, different. Usually, if you have a person like Bill Gates, right, he went to school, and when he drops out, he excels, right? And if you look at most very successful people, that's what happens. Like, even myself. I was just going to say. I did not fine. go for school. I never liked it. When I was at an age um, where I was like young man, you know, 15, 16, that was it. I was gone, and I I made my way and did my thing and was has been successful to whatever degree you think successful is. But um, but I felt like it was always kind of holding me back. I mean, some people are just not geared that way, you know. But you know, every child is different. Right. Everyone is different, right. and they all have a le different learning style, which is great. Right. You know, being homeschooled, if you have you know special needs or if you you excel in other things, I mean, it just works out. I mean, that's, that's, that's how. But that's the other... problem with the public schools is right. that it's a very generic, one brand fits all right. teaching. 
Whereas with this, you know your kids' strengths and weaknesses, so you can work more on the weaknesses and the strengths are an uh, easy go, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it. I wish we would have homeschooled. That's, you know, we never were into it. We didn't think about it. But now we've lived out here and we're learning all this stuff. I mean, I wish we would have done it. I mean, all of our kids are fine and they they actually, you know, turned out okay and everything. But I think we would have a much better relationship. Yeah, our daughter is homeschooling her kids. But I think we'd have better relationships and, you know, I think it would have just been better for our, the whole unit. So we give homeschooling a thumbs up, right? Thumbs up. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> right. So anyway, uh, probably uh, if you guys want to ask any questions down in the comment section below, we'll try to fire them over to our friend here, Doreen, and see if she can answer them for you. Or maybe she'll come check out the video after it's posted and then see some of the questions raised and maybe uh, answer them there. Um, but if you do have questions, leave them and stay tuned. Because she's a myself. veteran. Yeah, and we'll all try to get them answered. This is, like I said, just kind of a short, quick video. But look for more homeschooling videos from us uh, on our channel. And then we have some other neat stuff coming up. Um, the outdoor kitchen's almost done. I mean, like 90%. Yay! So we're going to get back to awesome. uh, getting videos out for you guys. So I guess that's it. You got anything else you want to add about homeschooling? I don't think so. What about like encouragement for like that parent that's on the fence, you know, like. Yeah, what do you say? Do you have anything oh, to tell them? Oh, I say just do it because there's so many, many kinds of curriculum and uh, you're, there's, I, I just saw on the news the other day that homeschooling has doubled since 2012. Right. I saw an article about that. I believe so, it. Yeah. Lots of people out there, lots of support. And um, I know a I lot know. of the homesteaders. So. Just like a lot of the homesteaders. Yeah, home a lot yeah. of the homesteaders are homeschooling. You know, take control of your family. Take control of your kids' education and futures. Um, and if you can't homeschool for some reason, you know, be more involved with this with the system. You know, uh, one of the uh, quotes we've heard in the past that you know I always. Uh, think about when I talk about this kind of stuff is if you send your um, kids to Caesar don't be surprised when you get back Romans so you know stop co-opting out your family um, you know be involved as much as you can and uh, everyone's going to be the better everything, for it. Everything besides your food, everything, your health, everything, everything. it all right. goes hand in hand. Right. So this is Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. I'm Doug. And I'm Stacy. Doreen. Danny. <laughs> we'll see you guys on the next one. <laughs>